What's up? What's happening, folks? Welcome back to the channel, Sports Life and Politics TV. I'm Samuel Koppel, YouTube's number one couch detective, and I'm here for the dudes. And I've done it once again. <laughs> we're going to be going over several clips today, but we're going to start off with this Puff Daddy clip. We got some Donald Trump and some Shannon Sharp and a few other clips from Kendrick Lamar with the Super Bowl, but we're going to go over this clip first where, once again, I'm ahead of the curve. The day Sean Puffy Combs' house got raided, that same day I made a video, and on YouTube, I was the only one asking pertinent questions. I checked all of YouTube, and in my thumbnails, you can see up to the far left in the corner, I put in the thumbnail, will Sean Puffy Combs tell on his friends to save himself? And it says, Sean Puffy Combs, homes raided. All of his friends are terrified. And I made that video five months ago. Let's look at the exact date. Let me see. You don't know. Let me look at the exact date so we can see. March 26th. That was the day his home was raided. And I made that video that day. And in the video, I asked some pertinent questions. Damn Puffy Combs. He's cooked. The industry is throwing him away. But the thing is, who's going down with Puff Daddy Combs? This is have Jeffrey Epstein written all over it. And three months later, I made this video. Sean Epstein Combs' life is officially in danger, allegedly. I make these videos because I want to give foresight on what's coming downhill. Now, in both of those videos, when, when, when the video came with him beating his girlfriend, I asked the question. His life is in danger now. Nobody, I, I didn't see one person on YouTube saying it anywhere. Now, it could have been, but I'm saying I didn't see it. Just like with the uh, when his home was raided. Everybody was talking about Combs and Sean Puffy. I said, damn him. What about all the people around him? After I made that video, you guys, all of a sudden, the next day, I swear before God, the next day, that was some of the narrative that started to be spinning. I'm not saying I'm the only person in the world thought that, but I was the most definitely the, the first person who put that on YouTube because I went through the algorithms and looked and I looked at, before I made my video that day. And I didn't see nobody talking about that. Nobody put that in their thumbnail and the few videos I clicked on, nobody was discussing that. I want to make sure of that. But now Puff Daddy has officially been arrested. Now Puff Daddy has a has a, has an appeal for bail denied. Why did they deny his bail? Because you want him to sit behind bars to put pressure on him to tell on the people that they want him to tell on. There are particular people who will not never get told on, and there are people that they were they are willing to bring down. And I said that in the video. All these people who've been part of Puffy Daddy is in trouble. They ass is terrified of what's coming. There's no doubt about that. Let's take a look at this clip. This one first, but now I'll go back to the other Thank one. Thank you. Sean Diddy Combs denied bail once again today after his lawyers tried to argue for home confinement as a federal case against him now proceeds. It is a case that involves allegations of sex trafficking, sexual abuse, and kidnapping. Let me see Ted Chen is live in our newsroom at the very latest. Robert, in arguing for home confinement, uh, Diddy's lawyers argued that New York's Metropolitan Detention Center was an inhumane place to keep Diddy until trial, but the judge rejected that. Experts say this case could have fun. Well, that's not an inhumane place to keep it. We'll call jail. Yeah, so if you break laws and then eventually the law catches up with you for whatever reason, even if they've been letting you get away with it, it is what it is. You've been breaking the law. They're going to do. I believe most of these charges against P. Diddy. Absolutely. Will it be difficult in court to prove a lot of this? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean Puffy ain't did a lot of these things. And when you evolve as much drugs as he has in these in, in these particular uh, cases, there are. Massive amounts of mistakes that are made when people are using narcotics and uh, what I think, what's it? Uh, is it phetamine? I, I can't think of the name of that new drug everybody using, can or some shit like that. All these new drugs, whether it's ecstasy, whether it's mushrooms, whether, whatever it is, they're using that to do psychological manipulation on a lot of these people. That's the same thing they use in MK Ultra Mind Control. A lot, of, a, lot, a lot of psychedelics, a lot of mind-altering drugs, a lot of narcotics. Yeah, so Puff Daddy, 
Yeah, this is going to be a long trial. And even if he's able to get off, they're going to drain him financially. Far-reaching implications. The fight continues. With bail again denied, the lawyer for Sean Diddy Combs promised to push for a speedy trial. In the meantime, advocates for survivors of sexual violence say the case is so extensive with so many witnesses, it could help other survivors come forward. Taking down an icon, that's a very hard thing to do. Yes. When one person comes forward, it can encourage another person to come forward. He's ready. He's focused. Uh, he has been ready to defend this case since he first found out about this case. Combs is accused of using his power, celebrity, and drugs to push his victims into sexual performances for his own gratification, then forcing them into silence using blackmail and threats. If they can just if if they can just prove that they were spiking drugs and drinks, which a lot of famous people do, shit. This is not famous. Normal. It's normal motherfuckers who do that shit too. But it's a lot of people who use drugs. And alcohol. See, they ain't nothing more worse than somebody thinking they're just drinking some vodka and you just spiked it with some molly or uh, some kind of drug that they didn't, some mind altering drug that we didn't, that you, they knew nothing about. That's that's some low down, dirty, trifling shit. And we know that they've been doing that in Hollywood since the beginning of Hollywood, damn near. The federal charges against him come after multiple lawsuits alleging decades of abusive behavior towards women including the recorded beating of then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura. Entertainment attorney Jonathan Handel says the government could claim not only his freedom, but also his homes in Los Angeles and Miami. He has the right to demand forfeiture of all properties that are used in, in, in and around, essentially, uh, commission of the, scheme, of the overall scheme that they allege. Attorney Gloria Allred, who represents some of Combs' accusers in civil lawsuits, says the denial of bail sends a signal that authorities won't allow Combs or his associates to intimidate or threaten any witnesses as the case proceeds. It helps the victims to know that the prosecutors are looking out for them. Wherever he is, his resolve is the same. Um, he believes he's innocent. Uh, I believe he's innocent. Today, Jim cited the possibility of witness tampering as one of the reasons today will remain in jail. Peace over violence encourages survivors to reach out for help through their... And he, thought he said one of the things is witness tampering. The main thing is getting them to flip on the people that they wanted to flip on. If you shine puffy combs, are you telling? You damn skippy you are. You've been living in silk pajamas and eating, grape, eating grapes and shit for 30 years at this point. You're not built to go to jail. You don't want to go to jail. So whatever you have to do to get out of jail, you're going to tell. That's why I said in the video five months ago, going on six months ago, in March, his friends have to be terrified because there's no friends in the industry, y'all. He's not friends with LeBron James. They're, they're co-entertainers, which you like co-workers. All those people are co-workers. They're co-entertainers. They're not friends. A friendship is totally something totally different. Okay, let's go to this other clip and see. He's, to, he's trying to get bail. I think he was denied bail twice, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look at the clip. I would just supporter Anthony Carlo is outside the courthouse. Look at this. Look how they got him. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that's right. And this is certainly a blow to Sean Giddy Combs and his defense team because moments ago during that hearing, they were throwing the kitchen sink at this. Their proposal to offer the placement of one, if not two, retired police officers at Diddy's Miami home to control which visitors enter and to keep a lot. But it wasn't good enough for Judge Andrew Carter, who, as you just mentioned, denied bail for Sean Diddy Combs. You take a look at this video. We did watch uh, Combs' family walk into Manhattan Federal Court for this bail hearing. Certainly a disappointment for them to hear this update. Combs, we are told, blew a kiss to his relatives once they made it into the courtroom. The defense was asking the judge to set a 50 and like I said, all these people in entertainment are Luciferians. As you can see, they come in at all black. Everybody has on all fucking black. I mean, you know, they trying to send signals. You see with the big X on his back and all this little shit you, you think is just normal, basic shit is like trying to send signs to people who in the know with them to help them and be sympathetic towards them. But Puff Daddy's on his own now. 
Because when you're talking about spending time in jail, nobody wants to go to jail. That's not the place to be. So Puffy's on his own. I mean, he has his close friends, his, I mean, close family. I don't know how many friends he actually has. I'm pretty sure he has a few friends. But mostly now, you ever notice when people go to court, it's mostly all family. Very few friends. Million dollar bond that would have been co signed by Combs, his mother, his sister, and three adult sons. Prosecutors, though, arguing against having that bail set, and they won. Calling to attention in court today this 2016 hotel surveillance video that shows Combs viciously assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassie. Prosecutors telling the judge this is, quote, clear evidence of the dangerousness, what the defense has painted as a tumultuous relationship. Prosecutors continued during the bail hearing saying Combs' victims have extreme fear because of his influence in the entertainment industry. Judge Andrew Carter has acknowledged the flight risk and also said there was more concern associated with. Oh, I got a Spice Tactical. That's a Spice Tactical lawyer, uh, lawyer for AR-15. I have one of those. But uh, the thing is, I don't know why they're showing these guns. Are these guns illegal? They're showing these guns like all of this stuff is to mentally, you know, to sway you in a certain direction. Who cares if Puff Daddy has AR-15s if they're legal? Yeah, if they're legal firearms, they make it like, is that scratched out? If that's scratched out, if you're scratching out serial numbers, that type of shit, is that's totally different. It's, it's fair play then. But if these are registered weapons, that's a whole different ballgame. But yeah, that's a Spike's tactical lore. And I'm just wondering why they, oh, they maybe. They didn't. Maybe it's not scratched out. They just scratched. They just scratched it out using editing, so we can't see what the serial number is on there. But if these are legal weapons, what does this guy do with anything? It has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. The danger comes represented to witnesses and victims if he was released on bail. Prosecutors in the hearing saying that guns seized from Diddy's security firm, in addition to the AR-style rifles with defaced serial numbers found in his closet. There it is. Deface that ain't you can't have that shit, Sean. That's another thing he going. Oh, he gotta fight a lot. That's why I say, even say, which I don't believe that he's gonna beat all these charges, but say he did. The financial burden that's gonna be put on him to beat all of these charges and how long they're gonna drag this out and litigate this so they can make as much money as possible. Um yeah, Puff Daddy's gonna be he's gonna be toast after this. Yeah, it'll never be the same. It's not like he can go back into making music and people don't want to work with him no more. That's all, shit's over with. So powerful evidence of trafficking and use of force. The music mogul indicted on federal sex trafficking and racketeering, accused of using his fame and business empire to coerce women and male sex workers to participate in recorded sexual performances, one of which was happening in the hotel room. Prosecutors say when Diddy assaulted Cassie, he has pleaded not guilty. His defense lawyer again offering that uh, proposal of retired police at his Miami mansion. It was not good enough. The judge denying bail today, uh, which means that Diddy will remain in federal custody in jail behind bars here in New York City as he awaits trial in this case. We're live in Lower Manhattan. Anthony Carlo, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. You know, it is what it is. Like, I, I I covered that Cassie video. Look, what happened to Cassie? A woman should never be beaten and harmed like that. But Cassie's a Luciferian, is part of the entertainment industry, and she realized that that record career was never going to take off, and that's what eventually gave her the courage to eventually leave Puff Daddy. But she was toxic, too. He, She knew that he was beating on Kim Porter, and she was okay with that, and she found that funny and all those different things. But, you know, like I said, I blame all this on Puffy. I don't blame anything on Cassie. But I'm saying my empathy is not very high for her, but good for her that she was eventually able to leave. But she didn't leave for all the right reasons, like you would think, allegedly. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> we got Donald Trump here. Trump repeats false claim about a false claim about immigrants eating dogs and cats. Now, are there immigrants who will eat a dog and cat? Maybe. Let me say this. In different countries, there's different cultures. Everybody don't look at cats and dogs as pets in every culture. We know that. We know in China, yeah, people eating all type of weird bat soup. And man, I seen a, a Chinese, like one of them little wet, I don't think it was like, a, not a wet shop, but like a, I like them to open, open air markets where you have all these different exotic foods man they were eating all type of shit so every culture is a little bit different when you come to america and you start eating on mittens 
or furballs or Felix, any of those type of cats, that's a problem. They don't want you eating on Fido over here. That's a big no-no in America. Now, do I think Haitian people eat cats and dogs in general? No. Is it highly feasible that there was, I did see a couple of videos where some people had mittens on the grill, four legs up. Uh, and they say they lured him in with a ball of yarn. But I, <laughs> with a ball of yarn, I don't know. Well, let's take a look at Donald Trump and see what he has to say about that. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cat. <laughs> Kamala Harris is a laughing, giggling fool. She's like a fucking 12 year old schoolgirl. She cannot control her laughter to save her life. That shit was hilarious. Watch Kamala, look Kamala's face. She is, she, you think she's laughing because he's like, oh, yeah, right. No, she's laughing because that shit is funny the way he says that shit. Listen to him again. Yeah. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed. Watch Kamala. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs. <laughs> the people that came in, they're eating the cats. They're eating the, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. <laughs> you bring up Springfield, Ohio. And you reached out to the city manager there. Uh, he told us. There have been no credible reports of specific oh pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. Well, I've seen this, people on television. Let me just say here, this is the people on television saying my dog was taken and used <laughs> for food. So maybe he said. <laughs> oh my God. Donald Trump said if one of them Haitians come into contact with men, that's his ass. Now let me say this. One thing that I've noticed about dark skinned people or what you would say, black people who are not from America, who are not Negroes, who come from Africa, or come from the Caribbean. They are really, really sensitive to uh, verbal abuse. I've noticed that. It's not like Negroes. Negroes in America, we didn't been through it. We didn't been through lynchings and water holes being sprayed, dogs being sicked on us, all our uh, leaders being assassinated. Uh, we've been called monkeys and lazy. We've been called everything under the sun. So our skin is extremely thick. We'll tear each other ass up. Not only that, we'll roast the shit out of a white man. You let a white man tell you niggas is eating dogs. We say you motherfuckers is eating people. You Jeffrey Dahmers and Ted Bundy's and all you sick cannibal ass. Well, we get on their ass quick. We won't. I had a girl at, at the job I work at. She's Haitian. She's an immigrant. She's only been for like nine months. She had the job crying and carrying on. And I feel a little bit for her, but not really. My thing is you got to toughen up. This is America. This country was built by us, but built on the foundation of racism. So that's something that you have to suck it up, suck up and be tough with. You have to have a thick skin. Words, what they say, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words ain't the one shit that's going to kill you over here. So all you Haitians and all you immigrants from uh, uh, Guatemala and wherever the hell else you're from south of the border, you better toughen up because they're going to say all type of shit about you. They really don't even get on here and overly talk about black people like they used to because that, that shit don't phase us like it used to. We'll get on your ass too, whether it be physical or whether it be verbal. But yeah, all that crying and shit like uh, 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 If the worst thing they call you is a cat eater <laughs> or a mittens muncher, <laughs> if that's the worst thing they call you is a cat eater, or a dog, or, or, or a dog swallower, you okay? My God! I that, and maybe that's a good yeah. thing to say for a city manager. I'm not taking this from but television. But the people on television say that dog was eaten by the people that went there. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll stay up there. Oh my God! You gotta love Donald Trump. Let's go on to the next clip, you guys. This is going to be quick with Shannon Sharp. Now I covered Shannon Sharp when Shannon Sharp left Skip Bayless. I made a video on that. And in the video, I, I said that it's a legend that's shining sharp like them boys. One thing about straight men, 
you very rarely get them to surround themselves with gay men. Not that they won't come in contact or be cordial. Now, there are extenuating circumstances where you might have a brother, a cousin, an uncle, family member. Yeah, there are extenuating, but in general, straight men and gay men don't vibe together like that. That don't mean, I'm not saying they won't speak to each other, but they usually don't voluntarily want to work in proximity, especially straight men. Whatever it is, you can call it a phobia, whatever, I don't care. Usually, you're not going to get a straight man to say, I'm hire a gay man to be my stylist. Because no matter how good you say that stylist was, it could have been a woman who's just as good as a stylist. And most gay men, they're going to style you in gay fashion. That's a fact. So Shannon Sharp had a gay stylist and he's surrounded by another gay man. I think his name is Jordan. But the point is, straight men don't surround themselves with gay men. But Shannon Sharp has. And then on this screen, you see, it says that Shannon Sharp take four showers a day. What straight man you know take four showers a day? Men take showers for one reason and one reason only. That's to get the dirt off of. Period, point blank. He want to get the days. I think even a straight metrosexual, the most you're going to get him to take a shower is twice a day. And that's a metrosexual. If you don't know what a metrosexual is, it's like a, one of those men who may, you know, they might live in the city. They might be in corporate America. They, been, they might be, not might be, but they're usually single and they're really good with the ladies and everything is pristine and clean. They have Two and three thousand dollars suits and all the colognes, and but they straight. They just kind of have that, you know. It seems like it's some sugar they take, but four showers a day is a dead giveaway. Well, let's take a look at Unk down here. He got caught with a Instagram live where it wasn't a video, one pointing directly at him. It's pointed at the wall, kinda, but you can hear in the background a shadow shot. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, get them nuts right there. Oh, yeah, baby. Go ahead and do what you got to do. Oh, baby, yeah, get right there. Go, oh, go. Oh, baby, touchdown. That's it right there. Touchdown, baby. Oh, yeah. I mean, Shannon Sharp was going on and on and on. And do I believe that that whole video was staged and orchestrated? 1,000%. Anybody believe that that was by accident is a fool. There's no way that that was an accident. Could something like that happen accidentally? Yes. But did, was this an accident? There's nothing you can do to get me to believe that Shannon Sharp did that by accident. No way, no how. So Shannon Sharp liking boys is highly likely. Highly likely. Now, I always leave room in my videos and I always say I could be wrong. But as you can see, let's just take a small, we go pause it on Shannon Sharp. <laughs> Go pause it on Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp obviously, obviously takes his health very seriously, and that's a great thing. Very popular. But then he put on the tightest nut hugging clothes. And people be like, Shannon, you can't wear them clothes that well, I like my body and this, that, and third. Shannon know goddamn well that he's that all the fashion he's into is gay fashion. He needs to stop it. Brother, even his jewelry selections don't be looking that right. And I still like Nike. It won't make me not watch Nightcap. I like Nightcap. I like him and Ocho. I think they make a great combination. They have great chemistry. But Shannon Sharp, 100%. I'm going to say, let me say, 100% of the is bisexual. At this particular juncture, I'm leaning towards gay. But he might just be bi. He might. There are people in Hollywood who like both, both men and women. It is what it is. But I do believe Shannon Sharp, that whole video on stage. He was just a hollering and a hooting. That right. Put it right there, baby. Yeah, right there, baby. Right there. Put your leg right there. Put your leg right there. Here I come. Here I come. Oh, you first down. First down in you, baby. Oh, Shannon Sharp was acting a fool. <laughs> it was hilarious. Ain't something I ever want to hear again. But yeah, funny nonetheless. But I just wanted to cover that because I did see that staged event to Shannon Sharp because everybody been saying he liked them boys that he <laughs> he didn't finally stay so she tried to get some people off his back but that doesn't work in today's time doesn't work let's take a look at this Kendrick Lamar gets the Super Bowl now there was a clip of Lil Wayne and you know I had been recently sending out clips we had like a little uh little Instagram group chat group, uh, group chat with my cousin a few buddies and shit 
And I was sending out some clips of Lil Wayne freestyles or like Lil Versus. And Lil Wayne is one of the greatest rappers of all time. He really is. And this is before the Super Bowl performer was announced. And I was sending those clips out because I, I love Lil Wayne. I think Lil Wayne is an all-time great lyricist. He is. I mean, to this day, he is still a great rapper. But Lil Wayne dropped a video after the Kendrick Lamar Super Bowl announcement. Sounded like the like the biggest little bitch I've ever heard in my life. I was broke down and I was sad. If anybody felt bad for Lil Wayne because he didn't get the Super Bowl, who feels bad for millionaires? who's living their best life, who still get to make music, who's still alive, who have the opportunity to take care of his family and all this shit. And I heard people say, I feel bad for Lil Wayne and look, fuck all that shit. Nigga, I feel bad for a person who's on his way to work and had a car accident and paralyzed. I feel bad about a person crossing the street coming home from wherever they was coming from. They hit by a car and they didn't deserve none of that. I feel bad for the kid who's born with some kind of disability. I feel bad for a a lot of different things, but celebrities is at the bottom of the list for me. It really is, especially at some shit about like this. Where Lil Wayne is on there crying, talking about he broke down because he didn't get the Super Bowl. He's been in shambles. Nigga, you're not a better performer than Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar puts on a real show. That don't mean Lil Wayne is not a great rapper. I'm talking about the performance. Kendrick Lamar is a performer. If you go on YouTube right now, you look up Kendrick Lamar performances. I mean, he has the stage. He has stage person to perform. All that shit. Lil Wayne barely remember his goddamn lyrics at the time. All that syrup sipping, weed smoking, cocaine sniffing, all the molly and ecstasy, all that shit catches up with you. So when he gets on stage, sometimes that shit, and he has a lot of raps, but sometimes, you know, that all them drugs, that shit, when you all you promoted is weed smoking, syrup sipping, whole fucking, and ain't look. We understand that's part of hip hop, but when it comes to corporate America, and they gonna make a choice between you and Kendrick Lamar. They picking Kendrick Lamar a hundred times in a row. I don't know what niggas is tripping on. Yeah, that shit sound crazy to me when I see that. Shit. I said, what the fuck is wrong with Lil Wayne? Sound like an all out hoe. And then, then he had a common decency to give a little small congratulations to Kendrick. I ain't saying you got to praise him. We can say, well, congratulations to Kendrick. If I'd at least heard that at the end. But you so sour about that shit. Like the Super Bowl owe you something. They don't owe you shit. They don't owe none of you. It was a time where we didn't, wasn't even getting nigga performers in the Super Bowl for a long period of time. We was getting Katy Perry and Justin Timberlake and everybody we didn't want. We, at least we got a nigga in there. And he's a much better performer than Lil Wayne. And he's a lot cleaner artist. Don't drink, don't smoke. Family man, married two kids. Hey man, that shit that shit matters in corporate America. Believe it or not, even though behind the scenes they might all be wicked, but perception is part of reality in this world. But let's take a look at. That. I also want to talk about this before I go on to the next clip. Kendrick Lamar made a song six sixteen in L A. And there was a sound at the beginning of the song, and people nobody ever figured out what the hell was that sound. In 616 in LA, because we know Kendrick is like a mystery rapper and you got to decode all that shit. And come to find out, Kendrick Lamar the whole time knew that he had this Super Bowl. And I said it in the videos I was making about him and Drake. Is this whole thing staged? Is this whole thing orchestrated? Absolutely it was. The whole thing is staged and orchestrated. Now, could people cross the line and go too far and make you go too far and the raps get a little bit more personal? Absolutely. But these people, people were in communications on the phone. That was no doubt. I said that a while back that these people were in communication. There's no doubt about that. But what kind of battle it was going to be was basically the communication. And Drake went to his <laughs> his number one M.O., which is somebody's wife or girlfriend, which usually gets him obliterated. But let's take a listen to this sound that Kendrick Lamar had in the 616 in L.A. Uh, uh. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear it's like the football machine. Uh, uh. At the time, nobody knew what that shit was. And then... Kendrick Lamar announces the Super Bowl. Take a listen to the sound. There you go. We warm up. Same exact sound. 
Now you have to start understanding and get a belief in Hollywood. Everything is set up. And they're not just saying, you know what? Uh, today is Tuesday. I think we're going to pick Kendrick Lamar. We're gonna, man, they knew that shit damn near a year ago. Maybe longer than that. I would imagine they have a lot of these artists picked out years in advance. That makes more sense. You can let them know. They know, hey, man, we're going to have you do the Super Bowl, such and such. And, you know, uh, not this year, but the next year, we're going to have you do the Super Bowl. So keep your nose clean. Everything's going good. It looks good for you. You know, we just don't want nothing to mess because we want you next. Once they realize that, yes, they're going to carry themselves a particular kind of way to keep their nose clean until that time. Our most artists are pretty much clean enough to where they can get on there and perform a Super Bowl. Every once in a while, you might have a wild card here and there, but most of the time, they're going to go with the, the, the person who's most corporately clean that they can sell the most. And out of Lil Wayne and Kendrick Lamar, you most definitely got to go with Kendrick Lamar. Congratulations, Kendrick Lamar. He's had a hell of a year. He just stepped all over Drake. Yeah, Drake needs to, I don't know what he's got going on right now, but he's lost every battle at every fucking turn. And Matter of fact, I'm going to make that the last video, but I'm going to talk about Drake a little bit before I turn this video off. As you can see, I want to go back up to Sean Puffy Combs because Jay-Z is another one. Drake is another one. When you're a sexual degenerate, it's, it's damn near impossible to turn off that degenerate behavior. There are people who pedophiles who know that the... The, the, the vultures are circling, the police, the Fed, all that shit circling, and they still indulge in pedophilia. They cannot help themselves. Degenerates cannot help themselves. Is Jay-Z a degenerate? Nine times out of 10, he is. Is Drake a, de a degenerate? Nine times out of 10, he's a degenerate. There's no doubt about that because Hollywood, the entertainment industry, the music industry, all that shit is engulfed in degenerate behavior. There's no doubt about that shit. So Drake has to be on the lookout. Jay-Z has to be on the lookout. And them are just the big names. And like I said in this video, will Sean Puffy Combs tell on his friends to save himself? 100%. Will Sean, <laughs> let's say, uh, Sean Puffy Combs, Holmes Raider, all of his friends are terrified of what he's going to say. There's no doubt about that. On Sports Life and Politics TV, I'm usually ahead of the curve. But this has been Samuel Koppel on sports, life, and politics TV. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. I just hooked your ass on Donald Trump, said them goddamn Haitians are eating cat and dogs. Right. Peace.